In this video, you're going to see me make a four ton glue pulling monster out of a load of steel. Hello, I'm Martin Sadler from Dent Remover, and in this video, I show you how I build my very own glue pulling tower. Now this is the first of two videos coming out where I show you all the steps that I take to build this beast. So grab a brew and enjoy. Oh. So this is the steel that I'm going to be using. It's a uh, box 40mm. Uh, I'm going to be using this for the base, for the vertical uh, legs and the pulling arm itself. So I'm going to mark it all up cut it into its, um, into its different sections and then start welding it up. Okay, so I've got all the main parts cut. I've got the base done. That's how I want it to be. And I got the uprights cut, but I need to support these. So originally I was going to use some large um, brackets, some large triangle pieces, but that is quite overkill. We're only pulling glue. We're not pulling cars out with chains and clamps. So I'm going to half this. I get two triangle pieces, pop them in like that. And that's going to be more than adequate for, for you know, the purpose of this. So I'm going to chop this bit of triangle in, in half and then start tacking stuff together. get this leg tacked on, this upright tacked on. So I've already marked it, it's, it's uh, 400 mil, just slightly off centre from the, uh, the metre base. Okay, I'm happy at that. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little welds either side and then um, put the put the supports on there and weld it all up in one go. So I'm going to do um, each half separately so I can get to both sides and weld both sides and then I'm going to join the base together and then look at putting the hydraulic ram in. Jabbly. Okay, let's see how it fits. So what I've done is I've measured to the centre of the, the square tubing um, so I can get these supports in. Absolutely bang on central. So that one looks good. Lovely stuff. Right, so I'm just going to put a tack on each end and then I can weld it up properly. Hey 
then, that's all the welding done. Just going to clean these bits up and then look at the um, look at the middle bits. To put these two sides together, I was originally going to use some more 40 by 40 box um, in the middle and just weld it up, but that's not going to give me enough space, just in case I want to put a, a larger ram in there um, in the future. And also, if I put the box section in there without these fillets, then the, um, the actual pulling arm would chafe on the sides. So there's a little bit, well it's 5mm, um, let's have a look. Yeah, this is 5mm bar, so that's going to go in the centre and in, in the sides like that. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the bar and then I'm going to plug it to each leg individually and then once I've done that I'm going to stitch weld the tops and the bottoms. Also the reason why I've gone with the, um, the box in the middle is because I need to put um, a T-piece on the front and the rear so it doesn't cockle over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some 30 by 30 uh, box, 500 mil because these are a metre long, so it'll sit nice, it'll retract right into the uh, butt up, right onto the edge, and then I can use this to stabilise the pulling tower. Right, I'm going to drill these and then plug them on. So that's the plug welding sorted, now what I need to do, just need to grind them off, make the surfaces nice and flat and then I can put the two halves together. Just before I, um, I weld them together for good, I'm just going to paint the inside with a bit of black, it just saves me getting into all those nuts and crannies later on. So there's just one last thing I need to do before I start welding all this up. I'm just going to um, weld some steel at the top of these legs so that I've got the same width there as down here. So let's have a look. So that's 60 mil, okay. And up here we've got 50 mil. So just need to bring it out a little bit and then weld a piece at the top and then I can uh, run some nice welds on, uh, on the base. Sorted. Solid. Solid as a rock. Easy now. Okay, so I've just cut the uh, the, the stabilising bracket off, and yeah, I'm on 60 mil still. 
So I'm happy with that. Right, so next thing, I need to make the actual, um, cut the arm. So at the moment, oh, I think that's gonna be a bit too long. So I'm gonna go for about 1.5 meters, uh, get it chopped, and then I'll see how it looks. Oh God. Pull a bloody boat out with that. Okay, it's nearly time to put the swinging arm, the pulling arm in place. I've just done a few measurements. So, oh, the pulling arm is 1.5 meters long. That's the dead center of the bar. So I've marked it on the, on the legs. So there you go, that's how it's gonna sit. So I don't want my fulcrum any further than this point um, because I'm going to get 50-50, so if there's four, four and a half inches of travel on the round there, there's going to be four and a half inches of travel there. So I want to maximise the amount of travel I've got up above. So anywhere um, lower than the quarter area is ideal. So as you can see, there you go, there's much more travel on, on the top than there is the bottom. But what I've done and what, I, what I'm happy with is I'm going in the middle of these two points. So that's the dead, dead bottom of the, uh, the pulling arm, that's a quarter of the way up. So I'm going there, and that's gonna give me enough travel up top. So that's gonna be my fulcrum point. This is gonna be my fulcrum pin. This is 16 mil bar. I'm gonna drill the holes all the way through, um, put a few small holes in there, and I'm gonna um, attach these cotter pins so I can easily pull it out if I decide to put another um, fulcrum point in there in the future. So, get the drill out and I'll, uh, I'll show you how I do it. How good does this look? So we're getting somewhere now. It's starting to look um, like how I uh, dreamed it of, if you'd like to say. So I've got the fulcrum in there with the cotter pins, both sides. There you go. There's a bit of a gap. So what I can do is I can put some spaces in there if needed. Um, so yeah, there you go. What I need to do now is look at getting the porter power in there. So the idea is that's gonna sit in there like that. Okay. Um, but I need to attach it to the back and also to the uh, to the pulling arm. So the idea is I have um, a bit of tubing, a female, a male version, like that, hole through there and two brackets. And what I need it to do is just move slightly up and down, just in case um, the part of power needs to move when it's uh, fully extended. Also, I need to cut um, a groove. It's a bit hard to see, but cut a groove in the, uh, in the box and add um, a bit of piping in there. And basically, it's the same principle as a rear, but when, you, when I put the, uh, the part of power in there, and just lock it into place like that, pull it down all the way. That's secure, it's not gonna fall out because it's got the, um, the little um, sear clip in there. And once all that's done, we're good to go. Well, just about, because I've got to put the feet on both sides. Oh, a lot of work, isn't there?
here we go. Okay, so it's looking really good so far and I'm really happy with it. What I need to do now is um, support the rear of this port of power. So, um, like as before, we've got the male adapter, uh, the, male, um, the male end. That's going to go in like that and that will support the port of power. So when it's pushing the arm, it, it, you know, it can't go any further back. So what I need to do now is I need to uh, put some brackets on there. But um, this is a little bit uneven, so I've made a bracket. Sorry, I made a plate there uh, with some holes in. I'm going to plug weld those, and then we've got the, the two sides, the two brackets, like that. That goes in, and then that's the porter power side all done. Now I'm ready to attach the port of power ram to the pulling tower. So to do this, I needed something a little bit special. I was originally just going to use a, a bit of a steel bar, but I was a bit concerned about the amount of pressure inside the ram. I didn't want it to crack and push through. So I needed some kind of shoulder on it, like what you get with these extensions. Like that, okay? So because I'm very limited to the tools that I've got, um, I didn't have a lathe, but a friend of mine did. Colin Wood from Woodpecker UK and his dad kindly made me this. And I'm very appreciative, thank you very much. So um, it's just a bit of uh, steel bar, um, turned down slightly so it can fit inside. And we've got a washer on there so that it'll put up to the bottom of the ram. I'm very happy that that's going to be okay. And then I've just got um, an eight ton rated nut and bolt, like that. So I'm gonna drill both sides, put it together, stick the hydraulic on, and hopefully it's gonna work. Whoa, it's looking great so far. And that is it for part one. Part two will be along shortly, in a few days time, where you're gonna see me making the pulling hook, stability legs, and the final product. Yes. If you're liking this video so far, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Otherwise, you're gonna miss part two. That's it for me. See you soon. Cheers. <laughs>